Don't just continue to do the same thing over and over. But also in this lesson, it comes back to, to be forgiven, we have to forgive. That's hard. That's difficult. Because if I get hit, I want to hit back. If I get pushed, I want to push back. And whatever happens, that's our first reaction. Now it's different in self-defense or competition. But if I take something and I keep it in my heart and I think, God, I want you to do this for me, but they did this and I hold this. If I can't forgive, he can't forgive me. Here's the difference in, in the forgiveness. So many times we feel like to forgive, if somebody does you wrong, that you're going to be looking right across the table at them at Thanksgiving dinner. That's not the case. You can forgive somebody and let things go, but that don't mean you embrace them wholeheartedly and pull them right back in. You forgive what they've done, but a snake is a snake. You know, a, a, a wolf is a wolf. That don't mean, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn over a new leaf and I'm going to love animals and you got a crazy wild dog snarling at you. I'm going to lay on my stomach and pooch my lips out of it, at him and hope he don't bite me. You know, odds are you're going to get bit because you know what you're dealing with. You know what's in front of you. But it's having the wisdom of, I'm not going to hate this dog and go get a club and club it just because of the way it is. But we get to where somebody does me wrong and, and you need to deal with them, Lord. You need to get them. It is what it is. They are who they are. The longer you hold on to it, God can't help you because of your unforgiveness. And we have to set it down. And so many times we don't know how to. So it's by faith. By faith, I forgive them. I don't know how to do this. I don't like this. I don't. And me and God have these conversations. I can remember having in the very beginning as a new Christian telling him, I don't like it. I'm not happy about it. I don't like it, but you're God. And, and I'll do it because you want me to. But I'm still not happy about it. I still, and I would have these conversations, but God is God. How am I going to argue with, I'm not going to tell God, nope, I'm not doing this. Nope, I'm not doing that. Nope. We can do that, and we wind up like, like Jonah. We wind up in the belly of a great fish. If I say, nope, I'm not doing that, I'm going this way. <clears throat> what are you going to do to me? I, I'm running. Well, guess what? You ain't going to outrun God. You know? And so many times, just like with the prayer, we have to get on our face alone in our prayer closet, wherever it is. Sometimes it's driving. Sometimes it's wherever you're at, your zone. A lot of times with me, it's on a heavy bag. It's on a treadmill. It's on shadow boxing in a weight room when I get lost and I'm going through the actions of something, but I'm lost in my mind. It's just me and him. I'm lost. Him and I are having this conversation because that's my comfort zone. That's where I'm at. And then there's times that I just got to shut the bedroom door and tune everything out and it's just me and him. But in those times, I have to be able to let go of people that offended me. Because if I'm trying to really, really, really dive into God, if I'm really trying to, this is a basic lesson on how to pray. Okay, he's telling us, don't sit there and say, Lord, I want, I want a Red Ryder BB gun for Christmas. I want a Red Ryder BB gun for Christmas. I want a Red Ryder BB gun for Christmas. Or, I want a new car. I want a new car. I want a new car. No, no, he's telling us how, you know, how to pray. And it's a conversation. And we break it down. But in order to do that, we have, to, we have to get ourself right. So many times, we want to be, look at me. If you want to do this, do this like I'm doing it. I'm doing this all week. I'm, I'm working with the homeless, and we're, and we're preparing meals, and we're doing this, and we're doing that. And whatever we're doing for them, we're doing for the Father. There's things that we need to do in, in private. We're not doing it for, if we're doing it for, for recognition, that's our reward. But, if we're doing it because it's what he wants us to do, that's the attitude we need. That's the attitude. This is what God would want me to do. This is what Jesus, this is how he would want me to handle it. This is how, you know, there was a video going around of a, of a young man that, that got bullied in school and, and, you know, some guys had beat him up and his mom had posted the video and this and that. And, and I messaged her and she brought him to the gym last week. And so I spent a little time with him, and I talked to him, and I could tell that, that, man,
maybe his defense is, you know, being a little mouthy here and there. And, and, and I told him, I go, that just makes you a target. You can't, you can't do that. I go, look at, look at Superman. <laughs> this isn't the best example, but it's what came to mind. Look at Superman. Clark Kent has a red S under his suit and behind his glasses. But he's not out there showing it and spouting it off until it's an absolute time he has to use it. I go, that's like you. I go, I'm going to show you things that are there when you absolutely have to use it. But not for you to go around and be who, what and do what was done to you to somebody else. Not to be a bully. Not to be somebody. And, and it's that mindset of so many times we get equipped and it's like, oh, I don't have to take this anymore. Oh, I don't have to do this anymore. We can never forget who we are. We can never forget where we came from. We can never forget what God brought us through. We can never forget that lowest point because that's what keeps us where we're at. That's what keeps us grounded. It's when we can remember the fear, the hopelessness, the pain. The, when we remember that, we can relate to that. Because what happens is when we forget it, and, and that time that we were homeless and that time that we were hurting and that time that we were lost and that time that we were addicted, that time that, and, and we just separate ourselves from all that. So then when we see somebody going through it, we can't help them because, oh man, look at them. They just haven't figured it out. They just, because we forgot where we came from. Amen. We forgot what God brought us through. We forgot who we were. He doesn't want us to forget who we were. He wants to be able to use that person that was there. He wants to be able to use that addict that's tra that was trapped in us. He wants to be able to use that person that's fearful, that person that doesn't want to get up in, in front of people and speak. You know why? Because we're usable when we're there. When we have it all figured out, we're not usable. We start telling God what he needs to do. We start telling him the way this should work. We start telling him, yeah, I love your word, but you know, it would work way better if you did it like this. <laughs> I joke a lot about Jephalonians, but there's no Jephalonians in here. That's all made up. Okay? But so many people want their book, their way, how they want it. And, and him, how they want it. I don't want to follow him because he's going to tell me I can't do this. I don't want to do this because he's going to tell me I can't do that. You know, Damon or, or Dan, uh, I, I got to call him Danny. He doesn't, he's going by Danny now, not Daniel. But his verse about the alcohol, and, and we joked and stuff, but that, that hits home to me. I don't push that back to somebody that, that, that was me. That was me. Everything that he was talking about was me. I'm a guy that, I'm not the guy that can go sit down and have a beer with his buddy and be fine. That's not me. And I know that. I have the wisdom to realize I'm not going to drink just one. I'm going to drink until I'm broke or falling off a stool, or so messed up on other stuff that that's how it is for me. I have to have the wisdom to know I can't do that. Now, I'm not going to argue and say, no, you shouldn't do this. No, you shouldn't do that. And this is what you need to do. You know what? If you don't have the sense to know that it's not good for you, that's between you and God. But you have to get the sense to realize when they change the, the liquor stores from the liquor store to the supermarket, it's a constant draw. I walk by the aisle or I look behind the counter and it's like, oh, what is that? Wow, they didn't have that out before. I wonder what that is. Oh, I wonder what this is. And it's constantly, that, that's a whole other battle. It was easy not to go in a liquor store. But even all these years of being clean, all these years of being sober, there's, it, it, it like pulls you back. I'll be walking by, I'll, I'll cut through this aisle at, at Fred Meyers and it's like, whoa, whoa, what is that? And it's the marketing and the bottling and the labeling and... It's not that I want that. My thing is I know where it leads for me. And where it leads to me is I'm not good for anybody. Anybody. I am not good for anyone. I wouldn't be doing anything that God has me doing. Because it's all about me. It's all about me and all about what I want or don't want or don't like. And all my attitudes become bigger. Everything becomes bigger. When you, when, when you come in here... As a coach, with boxing, and I start working with somebody, and somebody's learning and they're new, and they catch me with a left jab, that makes me a good coach. That makes me a good coach. Because they took something I taught them, and they're using it. 
if they catch me with a right hand, hey. And they're going, oh, 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 I'm so sorry. And I'm like, no, don't be sorry. This is what we're trying to do. It makes you better. You get better by doing this. It makes me better. It makes me know I'm doing something right. When I can watch people in here come up here and start sharing verses and they're all tying in together, I sit back there going, this is so cool because it's all tying together. God's using each and every one of you. He's doing this and it makes us better because we are the church. We are the body, right? This is what it's all about. And all of us helping, building, and feeding each other. Things that I miss, you got. Things, things that you miss, you got. Things that you miss, you got. And everybody in here, by the time we go home, everybody's getting a little something they needed today. Everybody's getting to where it's not just the Jeff and Camille show. You know, Tony Orlando and Dom. I got you, babe. You know, breaking it down. No, don't say Don't say <laughs> Okay, but it's one of those where a lot of times that's what it becomes. This becomes my world. This is mine. I'm sorry, I love you guys, but my job is to feed you from behind this. It's not your job to be up here and use this. That's how a lot of people start thinking. No, that's what we're building here. Everybody, everybody has this opportunity. Everybody has this imparted in you to grow. Now, if we're doing it to come up here and start breaking it down and, and, and show time and this and that. Now, people preach different. There's times that I can shout it down. There's times I break it down. I'm like a little albino T.D. Jakes breaking it down, getting with it and preaching. But that's not all the time. That's not all the time. You quit laughing, Steve. <laughs> okay? But... There's different seasons. You have to be able to adjust to whatever's, whatever's coming down the road at you. What we have to learn to do is get ourselves out of the way. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's about you. It is about you. And watching you grow. And watching you hit that next level. And that's what we have to teach the people around us. That's what we have to teach with, you know, I may go out and I may beat you in a race. <laughs> I doubt it, but I may beat you in a race. You know what I mean? My, my, my surprise you. My surprise you. You just might, you know, <laughs> we're going to have to do it now. No, but anyway, but you may, you may beat me in, in how many left jabs you hit me with. Or every, but God's pretty fair about stuff. God is pretty fair about stuff. And when we break that down and when we look at it, my abilities and my strengths and my things are, are mine, but he's pretty fair about I don't just have everything and nobody else has nothing. We all have our abilities. We all have our strengths. We all have things. What we need to do is find out where they are. You can yeah. be so bummed out. If I go race him 20 times this week and he beats me 20 times, I could give up on everything. I'll never beat him. I will never beat him. I could go sit around the corner of the building and cry. I'll never beat him. I'll never be able to do it. And I could be so focused on not being able to beat him, I can't see what my strengths are. You know what I mean? He may beat me up in the ring. Every time I get in there with him, he puts a beating on me. Left jab, right hand, left hook. I could be so focused on getting beat by him that, that I don't see what my strengths are. You have to see what your strengths are. You can't, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these contests that we put ourselves in are rigged. They're loaded. If I'm going to try to beat him in a race and it's not physically possible for me to beat him in a race, I'd better find what my strengths are. And you know what? Before the end of the week, I'm probably going to challenge him to a spelling contest. I'm probably going to challenge him to something different where my strengths are. Okay. And that's what we have to do. But we get so wrapped up in, I want to be strong in this area, but I'm not. So it ruins the whole rest of my life. It ruins everything with my relationships with people. Because I can't beat him in a race. It's over. No. Find what your strengths are. That's good. Look in different areas. It doesn't have to be in a sprint. It doesn't have to be in a marathon. It doesn't have to be on a weight bench. Everybody has their strengths. But I can't give up on my life because I can't beat you in your strengths. I have to find my own. Yeah. I have to build my own. I have to see what they are and start looking at it and say, okay... I'm okay with this. I'm going to nurture this. I'm going to work with this. I'm going to, 
I'm, I'm going to polish this. And sometimes it comes from different ways. When I started boxing, I was in boxing two weeks. Two weeks. Sparred the first night they put me in there. You know, I had brothers. I was okay. In two weeks, they had tournaments. I had no clue what to expect. I said, oh, we got you a match. All right, you know. And I'm thinking like in the gym, they have these big old padded gloves and big old headgear. So they get me a match and it's way out of my league. The guy was like two classes, weight classes above me, all this different stuff. And, and I'm agreeing to it. And they start putting the gloves on me before the fight. And I'm like, whoa, where's these gloves we've been practicing in? These, these are like little bitty gloves. And I tell you what, I took the beating of my life. I took the beating of my life because I was so unprepared. I was so not ready. Now I could have taken and been like, I am done. Boxing is stupid. Boxing coaches are stupid. Everybody's stupid. And I'm not doing this ever again. But I told myself, that will never happen to me again. I will never be so unprepared. I, I will be ready. And anybody that I work with will be ready. This will never happen to them on my watch. Never. I look around and there's lost and hurting people every day. Have no hope. I was one of them. Have no hope. No hope. God reached down and saved me. Now, I don't just hold on to that and coast through life and not share it with anybody. I don't take what he gave me and just tuck it under my arm. And I hope you figure it out. I hope you get it together. Because I've got mine. i got mine. I, I, I hope you get it together. What I do is, I take my strengths and I help make them strengths for you. You take your strengths and you pour them into me. That's what it's all about. I can't take and let one little instance of something not go in my way and it's done. Done for everybody around me. I'm through. Come into church and you know what? Kevin had a better scripture than me. Fine. Fine. Why do I even do this? I come in here. He had a better scripture than me. I'm just going to quit. No. That's awesome. He had an awesome scripture. Yeah, I'm going to pick that up. Yeah. Everybody's ready to put a whooping on me right now. Here we go. And it was mine, by the way. So. But we lose it over one instance. We lose everything around us. The day is shot over one thing going wrong. Never give anything or anybody that power over you. Yeah. Never, never give anybody that power over you. Marriages fail. Relationships fail. Just want to give up. Why go on? Gave them everything. And they just, just kick me to the curb. Well, you know what? Get up and keep going. Because the only thing you found out is they didn't deserve what you have. They didn't deserve you. Somebody else will be blessed. Unless you're a jerk, then you need to change that. You know, that's just the reality of, okay, maybe I need to change some things. I'm running people off. You know what I'm saying? But so many times, one instance of not going our way and we're ready to jump off a bridge. Coming into this next year, I have a whole nother mindset than I've had. I'm somebody, I can't even put into words my love and admiration and respect for God and dependence and trust. I just trust him. Everything's going to fall into place. I just trust him. This prayer where we started and he broke down the prayer when he broke it down, that's basic. And it starts with forgiveness. It comes back to be able to forgive. Be able to let go. Somebody says something about you, let it go. Somebody don't like you, let it go. Move forward, because the only thing it's going to do is hold you back. Mm -hmm. They're going to go on with yeah. whatever they're doing. They're not even going to be around. You may never see them. You may never look to them. You may never. I can remember an instance when I was going through something and having a hard time, you know, really forgiving and moving on. And, and it's like through my prayer and through my reading and through everything, it's like, it's like God told me, it doesn't matter if they go on and become a millionaire and live this lavish lifestyle. That doesn't affect me and you. 
Don't throw away our relationship over what happens with them. I could sit there and say, it's so not fair. They did this and they did that. How did they do this? That's, that's between them and someone else. And just like it talks about, when you do things in front of people, that's your reward. If you want to add a boy, that's your reward. There's going to be people through the whole course of their life, their bank account is their reward. And when it comes down to it, that bank account means nothing when it comes to eternity. That vehicle means nothing when it comes to eternity. So it's one of those that we have to be able to see the value in what God's put in us. I have to be able to see the value in the worst beating I ever took. That has to mean something to me. I have to get the value out of that. And I do. I see the value in it. Don't necessarily want to do it again. But I see the value in it. And it makes it valuable to other people. Because now I pour into them. And I want them to get the same value. So, coming into this next year, really be searching your strengths. Don't compare your strengths to my strengths. I'm not comparing my strengths to your strengths. So you beat me in a foot race, good job. Good job. I'm crusty, I'm old, and yeah, I hope you can feel really proud. No, I'm, not, no, I'm joking. It's one of those that, but you have to really find out what your strength is. But you know what? If I, we, we have a competitive nature. We're competitive. And we want to beat everybody at everything. And sometimes when we beat somebody at this and we beat somebody at that, they learn to start walking in being beaten and getting beat. Don't allow yourself to walk in defeat. Well, why should I even try? Why should I even try? Why should I even? It doesn't matter. They beat me in a boxing match. They beat me in a foot race. They beat me in, in whatever. And that's one of my, you know, one of my favorite sayings is I have a, a friend of mine and his older brother used to always beat him at everything, beat him at everything, and then hold it over his head. And he would hold, hold it over his head and he would bug him about it and he would tease him about it until he got to a certain age and his brother's like, you want to go a couple rounds? You want to race? You want to do this? And he says, no, let's have a spelling contest. Because he knows he would beat him at the spelling contest. And basically it's a roundabout way of saying, you say whatever you want, but I'm smarter than you are. And I'm always going to be smarter than you. You know, and it just cracked me up. That was his defense. He found his strength. And he didn't let all this stuff defeat him and keep him down and hold him back. Never give anybody or anything that power. Going into 2020, it's a new year. I'm not a New Year's resolution kind of guy. But this is a point where I'm making changes in my life. I'm making changes in, in the ministry. I'm making changes all the way around. All right? And, and I'm challenging everybody to do the same thing. But it goes back to those basics. So get some alone time. Get on your face before God alone. I don't care where it is. I don't care where it is. Just spend some time, whether it, you start out at a minute a day. All right, I'm going to spend a minute kneeling by my bed. I'm going to spend a minute here. I'm going to spend a minute here. Then I'm going to go to two minutes. Then five minutes. Then 10 minutes. Then 20 minutes. Then an hour. And you just, and you just work with it and you start spending that time. I get caught up and I'm going all the time. And I'll go, 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 and I'm constantly in a thought process about God, constantly in a process about how can, how can we bless them, how can we do this, how can we do that. But in the middle of all that, I still need to stop. And I need to spend time in the Word. And I need to spend time just in prayer. Instead of, I communicate with them all the time. But that's just like, I could think about boxing all the time. But I have to spend time working the back. I have to spend time doing cardio. I have to spend time. Whatever your strengths are, whatever you think your strengths are, whatever you want your strengths to be, build those. Nurture those. You know, keep the dust off of them. Don't let them get, don't start piling laundry on it so you don't even know what it is. And don't do it for everybody else's reward. Mm -hmm. Don't do it for everybody else. This is between you and God. Mm -hmm. We want to do things because our heart's right. We want to do things because it's what he wants us to do. Awesome today. You guys, awesome scriptures, awesome 